up until later this year, if you wanted to back up Microsoft 365, it was very much a third party effort, product, what have you. And now, as of Inspire, welcome to Microsoft Inspire 2023, introducing Microsoft 365 Backup and Microsoft 365 Archive. Scott, we have some new options here for not only backing up data in Microsoft 365, but you know that expensive SharePoint storage we talk so frequently about when <laughs> people do things like try to migrate file shares into SharePoint and try to pull all of their data because data retention just isn't necessarily a thing. Um, now we are going yeah. to eventually, hopefully, because there's not really pricing on this, but have a new Microsoft 365 backup service providing recovery of OneDrive, SharePoint, and Exchange at unprecedented speeds for large volumes of data with the restore service level agreement while keeping it all within Microsoft 365. So backup SharePoint sites, OneDrive accounts, Exchange mailboxes, restore said things, search and filter. Scott, do you know why they can achieve unprecedented speeds? Because they don't have to rely on the API that all the third parties do. Uh, yes and no. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I they know. may. Um, I don't know what so, they're so doing. If you but. go back <laughs> and you watch the Inspire session for this one, uh, they do call out that backup partners have access to the same set of APIs. But typically what happens when you're using a, a Microsoft 365 or O365 backup provider is they are backing up your contents uh, someplace yep. else. Like it could be in Azure, it could be in AWS, could be in a data center someplace, but it's, not but like it's going out to in this, someone else's <laughs> premises. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which could give you warm fuzzies, right? There's the whole like rule of three with backups, you know, right. like, you know, I should have one here, I should have one over there, and I should have one offsite. Yep. Uh, and that generally like works out okay. So if, if I was a backup vendor, I don't know that I'm like sitting here and shaking my boots and going like, ooh, I have no value that I can offer to customers because there's tons of value in just saying like, I've egressed your data out of Microsoft data centers or uh, I've egressed it out of that tenant so that it potentially does exist in another place. Elsewhere. Uh, and, and, and there could be value there for, for uh, you know, some segment of customers. But for those who are like all in the ecosystem, uh, you know, this is something I think customers have been asking for for a long time. Like it's been a space that's been traditionally filled by partners and ISVs. And now Microsoft is kind of dipping their toe in the water and saying like, hey, let us have a have a go at this. Uh, and, and I think it's good to see kind of, uh, you know, cross categorical uh, services in here. So things like SharePoint sites, your OneDrive for Business accounts, which are SharePoint sites. So good job, yep. Microsoft. Like you keep calling it different things, but they're the same thing. Uh, and then exchange mailboxes and kind of having one-stop shopping uh, to get out all of that is good. Uh, the other good thing that comes along with this is a restoration time SLA. So there's going to be a hard SLA that you'll be able to measure Microsoft against when it comes to restoration times for these things, which is something that can be a little bit iffy with some of the third party backup stuff. Like you just don't know, like, are they going to be throttled by a given API surface, something like that? And, you know, it, it is right. what it is, uh, but it can be detrimental. So I, I think in this case, like if there was anything that was like secret sauce, it's like, it's going to be hey, that Microsoft restore. Already had your, yeah, Microsoft already had your primary data. Uh, they can kind of choose the best place to uh, co-locate your backup data and also the best medium to store that backup data on to meet those restoration SLAs that they have in place. And then they can just offer that to you as a service. Uh, like you said, <laughs> no pricing yet to be announced. So we'll see where that one goes. I, I really wonder over time, like just how much more money Microsoft can kind of squeeze out of existing customers. 
since it seems like growth has plateaued a little bit in the surfaces. Like they they grow, but they're not growing by leaps and bounds. It's more incremental compared to what it used to be. Right. Yeah. I'm curious to see pricing. Um, I use a third party right now to back up. So I back up Teams, SharePoint. And that's the one thing that's not mentioned in here, interestingly, is Teams, but they are backing up Exchange and a lot of conversations are there. So Teams may be kind of sort of in here a little bit-ish. Um, but my third party, I'm 99% sure that mine goes out to AWS for a backup. Going back to your scenario of it's not necessarily in a Microsoft data center. Um, it's out in AWS, but it is slower. Um, and to your point, if they had to restore and now I'm pulling out of AWS, I don't know what kind of uh, speeds they have coming out of AWS, how quick it is to write back in, uh, that type of stuff. To your point, it does say in here too that these partners can start leveraging it. Sounds like this is going to be an update to the backup APIs, some changes to the backup APIs to achieve these speeds kind of across the board. Because it does say by leveraging these APIs, partner apps can deliver the same unprecedented backup and restore speeds. Um, again, it does kind of depend on, to your point, where is it coming out of? Did they back it up to uh, Colo that they own? Did they back it up to AWS? Did they back it up to GCP? And what is that speed that you can achieve going in and out of something like that versus in and out of a Microsoft data center? Yeah, uh, well, interesting we'll see. times ahead. I think it'll be good to see how pricing falls out on this one. 